Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with our favorite medical doctor, Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, good to see you again. Good morning. Uh, see you, gentlemen. Hey, you know, uh, we've discussed this a couple times, maybe about eight or nine months ago, but uh, now with vaccines being more prevalent and uh, uh, maybe about half the country has at least one shot, uh, without getting into the politics of it all, uh, there's a, there have been questions about the efficacy and the technology, quite frankly, that they use for uh, most of the more prevalent uh, 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 vaccines such as Moderna and Pfizer, something called uh, RMNA or something like that. Yes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that and, uh, you know, uh, as opposed to live vaccines and fake vaccines and, I mean, viruses and stuff like we used to have as kids? Uh, what is right. what is that technology all about? Can you help us a little bit? Absolutely, you bet. It's a very uh, challenging time right now, of course, that we are all in. And so vaccines are traditionally, as in hundreds of years of developing vaccines, have been what the category, the term biologic vaccines. So you take an organism and you make it weaker and then you can put it into the human body and then the human body will make a, an immune response to it. So the classic example is polio. The polio is a, an inactivated polio virus that is made into the vaccine and then you, you don't even have to inject it, it can be given orally and it's very effective and the body makes a long lasting antibody response to that particular virus, right? So that's the classic understanding of vaccines. The, the next technology, and of course I'm leaving a lot out, but just to get to the COVID vaccines that people are focused on and concerned about right now, the, the next big technology, which is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the one-dose, what they did is they take a virus and they inactivate the virus and then they put in pieces of DNA from the COVID virus. And then the, the, it's like a, uh, a transporter virus. Is the, it's called adenovirus. I don't want to get too technical, but just imagine kind of a courier. A courier virus is carrying the COVID material into the human cell. So you inject it into the human. Then it gets carried. The courier takes the COVID DNA. This is important. DNA, two strands of DNA, and injects it and has it go into the nucleus of the human cells. Now, the courier virus does not replicate, right? That's the one that's just a courier, just carrying the COVID DNA from here to inside the human cells. The COVID DNA will replicate, not the bad part of the virus, but the part that makes the immune system respond. And then we make antibodies to the COVID virus. How does that sound so far? Pretty Wanna... good. So the the DNA that's coming from COVID, yes, is it, it's essentially inactive. It's the part of the COVID DNA that can't really hurt us, but it's enough for our immune system to recognize that's and right. respond to and create yeah. antibodies, and then be ready in case you do get the COVID virus. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that because that's the last important part of why vaccines work. Oh. Then we've got this relatively new technology, and it's not brand new. It wasn't invented last year to handle and respond to this particular pandemic. It's been in the making for several years. So the adenovirus, that courier virus, that technology has been researched for the last few decades. The biologics have been around, that's going back 
into previous centuries. Okay, so the mRNA, it's newer, but it's not brand new. It's not experimental. All right. And what happens with mRNA, so mRNA, the M is for messenger, messenger RNA. And the only technical thing I want to say is that DNA has two strands and RNA only has one. So instead of two, just one little strand. And so it's not as sturdy of a strand of nucleic acids. That's what the NA, okay? So the DNA, the RNA. And that is why the this is the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines are mRNA technology, which I'll, I'll explain a little more in a second. But that's why they have to be transported at these super ultra refrigerated temperatures. Mm. That, that you hear about. The, the Johnson & Johnson one, because it's the sturdier DNA, it doesn't need to be refrigerated at quite, the, it, it's like normal refrigeration as opposed to ultra refrigeration. Okay. Okay, so, right. so, so basically you're getting us now to the point of the, of the two new technologies that not so new technology, uh, it was technology waiting for such an opportunity, uh, which is the Pfizer and the Moderna, right? Yes, exactly. So the mRNA strands get transported into, so it's, they're put in actual little fat bubbles. So liposomal little globules, that's the vaccine that's injected. And then the mRNA goes into the human cells. And now this is the mRNA that is made in the lab for, for the COVID spike protein. Again, not the whole virus. We don't want the whole virus. We don't want to get sick. We just want the immune system to recognize parts of the vaccine, excuse me, parts of the virus that make it such a, a bad actor. Mm. All right, so here we have the mRNA, the messenger RNA, and that goes into the cells, and it the there's little, what we call organelles inside the cell, and then it makes these proteins that are like the spike protein, and it replicates, and that goes out into our system, and then the immune system responds. And it makes not, not just a response to the vaccine, but it's a memory. The, our immune system has memory. That's how come you can get a vaccine and then it'll last a long time. Because if you were to get exposed a while later, in this case, let's say a few months later, you will, your body will remember it and it'll mount the immune response. Sure, and that, that memory is really important. Otherwise, our immune, our vaccine wouldn't last very long, wouldn't be worth a whole lot. Exactly. Do, we, do we have any idea how long uh, it lasts? I, I know I had my uh, uh, Pfizer shots uh, the end of January, early February. And I mean, based upon everything I hear, I'm, I'm still protected and probably will be probably for at least a year uh, before I might need uh, uh, something to boost it up. Uh, do, do you have any better information on that? That is the understanding. I don't have more statistics for you. Those numbers are being gathered as we speak. The two doses for Moderna and Pfizer, those vaccines are showing higher efficacy than the single dose Johnson & Johnson. So we're looking at percentages in around 95% rather than about 72% for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. However, at least getting the one dose is absolutely better than nothing. And at this point, what we need to do for anyone watching who's concerned about the vaccine, there's one more thing that I like to explain, and this has been explained by other people as well. One of the concerns about the vaccines when they came out was how come they came out so quickly? That everyone thought is just like a, an experiment, they're experimenting on us, that's absolutely not true. What happened was that they did figure out, because it was such a worldwide crisis, there were steps that were A, then B, and then C, then D, 
and then E, then F. And the steps were done in that order. But the people who are very smart, the scientists who work on this all the time, all their lives and careers, not just a year and a half ago when this pandemic started, they figured out a way to not have to do those steps in a sequence. So the A to B team could work at the same time as the C to D step people. And they were able to crunch the timeline and that's how, that's one of the main reasons that we got the vaccines as promptly as we did. Now, another thing that you touched upon was that it's not really new technology. This is, they, they developed this a long time ago and they were using it for other kinds of things. Uh, and, and then, well, that, it seems to me that uh, the kind of uh, uh, stories I've been hearing is that they said, well, this is the perfect application for uh, used for COVID. And so what they did was they just took something that already existed, <clears throat> but this is the first time it's been used on such a large scale. That's is, right. Is that a fair statement? That's a very fair statement. It was considered sort of advanced technology. Again, because of the ultra refrigeration, they weren't exactly sure how they would be able to apply it. But just as you said, this was a way to, and, and a environment in which to do this at a very large scale with very, very great success. So I'm really, really hoping that we can continue to improve the vaccination rates. As far as the booster, that's the idea, is that we'll need to have a booster. As you said, 12 months, that's the understanding that we have right now. That's about normal for a coronavirus or a virus, like a flu vaccine. A flu shot is normally yearly. And so I think that that's what we're looking at. They're also developing new testing to be able to measure the antibody level. I have this done on myself. I heard about the test. My lab emailed me. I said, fine, I'm going to check this out. So I'm very happy to see a very nice high antibody level. And I'm going to just check myself just to see, just because I can, and see how is it dropping off quickly? Is it staying pretty stable? And of course, that data is being collected at a large scale. Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping that people will realize that the Delta variant that everyone's talking about now is being these the increase in cases and largely due to that more infectious variant of the virus is mostly in areas and in groups of people who are not who are not vaccinated. So I'm really hoping, and, and these vaccines all do a cross reactivity. All right, so they're teaching our immune system to respond to that spike protein, which all the variants have in common. And that is why even if you get the vaccine and if you're one of the people who will be exposed or even get COVID afterwards, number one, it will dramatically, and there's no such thing as 100% in, medicine and health. Mm. However, it's almost zero chance of dying from COVID, which is, of course, extremely important and unpredictable. It's mostly in older people, but not 100%, but also reducing the severity. I had a patient tell me about her. She got, this is just after vaccinated, after being vaccinated, the husband was the only one who'd been vaccinated. The rest had not yet mm. gotten vaccinated. And one of the teenage kids brought home COVID. And the dad who had gotten vaccinated, his was pretty mild. It was like a little brief, almost like a cold. But the rest of them really felt pretty miserable for a little while. So I'm hoping that people will be reassured by what we're talking about today. Great. And, and also, I understand that um, uh, I've been taking flu shots for years. And uh, I haven't come down with the flu. But... Uh, the flu shots are, are probably not even as close in effectiveness. And uh, more people die of the flu every year, even those that have had flu shots, although it's, they're pretty effective. So uh, I guess um, if you're a musical fan, then uh, like Hamilton says, uh, I'm not going to miss my shot. So if you haven't had your shot yet, it's time to get your shot. Dr. Liz, this is uh, amazing stuff. And it, you know, as you were describing um, how it all works, 
I flashed back to uh, Dr. Salk and uh, the polio vaccine. What an amazing accomplishment that was, whatever it is, 60 years ago, 75 years ago, that uh, that he was able to do that without the technology we have today, the technology you described, RNA, DNA, um, just amazing. So we, I'm, I'm very thankful uh, that we, that science has progressed to the point where we can make a vaccine, even if it's just the, I'll call it the simple, the, the yearly, uh, the yearly flu vaccine. You know, yeah. the, the fact yeah. that they know it's coming around, they can make a vaccine for it, and I can get it to my, to my. By, uh, by the way, also, I, I saw a uh, cartoon the other day, and uh, a, a mom was showing her her child uh, the uh, the walk on the wrong where she had the smallpox vaccine. And the child looked up at the mother and said, what's smallpox? And the mm -hmm. mother answered, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's right. Do you, want, do you want, have anything further you want to add, Liz? Yeah, I wanted to also dispel the myth about the chip, some type of tracking. First of all, I saw something funny that said, that nobody needs to put any kind of chip into humans. They can already track us around because we all have our phones. <laughs> We're already carrying our chips around as it is. So I thought that was pretty funny. But I just want to dispel that myth. You know, there it, it's just not true, simply simply put. And there's just no room for it in this. What well, everything we're talking about takes a lot of. Uh, focus and concentration and attention to this level of detail and so that there's there's no tracking or anything like that it is really a genuine vaccine technology that gets our immune system to do what it's designed to do and to protect us individually and also as a human community great well thank you very much and uh, uh, as uh, I think uh, we all agree, if you haven't had your shot, it's time to get your shot. Yeah. Take care of yourself and take care of those around you that uh, have uh, compromised immune systems, uh, kids that sure. are not eligible yet. So, uh, uh, but there should be no fear in uh, getting uh, uh, the COVID vaccines. Thank you, Dr. Liz. Dr. Liz, this is a wonderful, wonderful update. Thank you. Welcome, thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.